Everyone is cowering and afraid in the face of what we're seeing now, but not everyone, it turns out. There is good news. You may have seen the recent letter from a father at the Brearley School in New York. He wrote it to parents at the school, hundreds of them. Brearley is a private girls' school on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It's where some of the richest and most famous people in the world send their daughters and have for more than 100 years. It's a famously good school. Brearley has long been a liberal place, but over the past year, like so many schools in this country, it has become cultish and totalitarian. A parent called Andrew Gutman finally said so. Here's part of what he wrote. Quote, Our family recently made the decision not to re-enroll our daughter at Brearley for the 2021-22 school year. She's been at Brearley for seven years, beginning in kindergarten. In short, we no longer believe that Brearley's administration and board of trustees have any of our children's best interests at heart. It cannot be stated strongly enough that Brearley's obsession with race must stop. The administration and the Board of Trustees have displayed a cowardly and appalling lack of leadership by appeasing an anti-intellectual, illiberal mob and then allowing the school to be captured by that same mob. I object to the view that I should be judged by the color of my skin. I cannot tolerate a school that not only judges my daughter by the color of her skin, but encourages and instructs her to prejudge others by theirs. By viewing every element of education, every aspect of history, every facet of society, through the lens of skin color and race, we are desecrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we're utterly violating the movement for which such civil rights leaders believed, fought, and died. I object to the charge of systemic racism in this country and at our school. We've not had systemic racism against African Americans in this country since the civil rights reforms of the 1960s, a period of more than 50 years. To state otherwise is a flat out misrepresentation of our country's history, and it adds no understanding to any of today's societal issues. If anything, long-standing and widespread policies such as affirmative action point in precisely the opposite direction. Brearley, by adopting critical race theory, is advocating the abhorrent viewpoint that black Americans should forever be regarded as helpless victims and are incapable of success, regardless of their skills, talents, or hard work. What Brearley is teaching our children is precisely the true and correct definition of racism. I object to Brearley's vacuous, inappropriate, and fanatical use of the words equity, diversity, and inclusiveness. If Brearley's administration was truly concerned about so-called equity, it would be discussing the cessation of admissions preferences for legacies, siblings, and those families with especially deep pockets. Let's pause now and smile because that's so true. If the administration was genuinely serious about diversity, it would not insist on the indoctrination of its students and their families to a single mindset, most reminiscent of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Instead, the school would foster an environment of intellectual openness and freedom of thought. And if Brearley really cared about inclusiveness, the school would return to the concepts encapsulated in the motto, One Brearley, instead of teaching the extraordinarily divisive idea that there are only and always two groups in this country, victims and oppressors. I object to the censorship of books that have been taught for generations because they contain dated language potentially offensive to the thin-skinned and hypersensitive, something that's already happened in my daughter's fourth grade class. I object to the lowering of standards for the admissions of students and for the hiring of teachers. I object to the erosion of rigor in classwork and the escalation of grade inflation. Our nation will not survive a generation of leadership even more poorly educated than what we have now, nor will we survive a generation of students taught to hate its own country and despise its own history. The letter goes on like this. The entire thing is worth reading and it's worth sending to everyone you know. It is brilliant. Why isn't this guy running the country? How did the school respond to the letter? The school didn't respond. Brearley's headmistress, a semi-literate called Jane Freed, just dismissed it out of hand as, quote, deeply offensive and harmful, and then just moved on without addressing a single one of Andrew Gutman's points. Shut up and send your 60 grand. That was her response. You gotta wonder, this is a scam obviously, but how much longer can this scam continue? This scam we pretend Brearley is an impressive place and the rest of them, collegiate Spence, pick your school. They're not impressive, they're poisonous. So how long will we pretend they are impressive? Not much longer, you've gotta think.